Okay, I, I really hope you guys didn't get me singing on there because I'm singing for a little bit. Alright, picking up where I left off. Part 2 of my vlog, Remembering the Dead. I have to read it again on my screen to make sure I got it right. Okay, let me look at this cemetery here. This is Old Jerusalem Cemetery. Now, I don't care if I hurt any feelings on this one because I have a lot to say about the cemetery. Uh, I don't even care if I hurt somebody's feelings when I say this. That cemetery is in piss poor condition. And like, I can see my eyes getting kind of red because I'm getting so mad. They kind of like bloodshot when I get mad. I am just so angry about this cemetery. I saw a news article where the guy that was taking care of it said he was going to fix it up and put markers down where the bodies were buried. I gotta get another book out for this because this is gonna be a long ass rant. I'm not even apologizing for cussing this time because I am so freaking angry about this. Um, he said he was gonna fix it up because a man in Colorado found a stone in his backyard like a, this was like a big ass obelisk. Like how do you load something like that into your car and drive off with it? Um, he found it in his yard in Colorado and this is an Iowa cemetery and the man, um, I am not angry at this man because what I think, what he did, I applaud him for because I think it was something really good. He brings it back to the cemetery after he researched it and he found the cemetery and they put it back where it belonged and that was so nice of him and I'm glad that he did that. I am no angry feelings toward that man whatsoever. The man I'm angry at is a completely different man. <laughs> that will be good man. We'll call him good man. Um, the one that brought the stone back. So the article online, I can't remember it right off, so if anybody wants to get mad and argue with me, go ahead because I will argue right back with you. He said he was going to fix it up, put stones back where they need to go, where they belong, where bodies once were. It used to be a filled cemetery and now broken headstones everywhere. The only the stones you're seeing in this picture are the only ones that are left standing. There's maybe a, a stack of a few that are just piled up in a pile in the middle. And I went up there with my aunt and we were looking around and this guy comes up on his lawnmower just to see what we're doing and the grass was already mowed. So he was just being a nosy ass coming up and bothering us, which I can understand. Like, you, you want to see if somebody's um, vandalizing but that cemetery was beyond vandalizing and it was daylight it wasn't dark or anything so you could clearly see if we were doing anything anyway he obviously did not know me if he thought I was vandalizing it and he comes up there so we leave because he's rude as hell the grass is already mowed and I already have social anxiety so I automatically think everybody's being rude and judging me because that's just how social anxiety works. You just automatically think everybody is judging you. And so I angrily, I had to go all the way back. I left a backpack of, I had a notebook and like my camera in there. And I don't remember, I think I had my ghost box in there. And so I'm like leaving, I'm like, oh shit, gotta turn around. So I turn around all angry and I go and get my backpack, sling it over my shoulder and I'm like, huh. And I do one of those like, fine, I'll leave type of things. And I left. And then I found that article where he said he was going to replace everything, and that was like one or two years ago. I think we're coming up on two years now. And shit is not done. You've had plenty of time, and if you've got enough free time to come up there on your lawnmower and see what the hell I'm doing in broad daylight, you've got enough time to fix some shit up, or at least put the stones back where they belong, instead of stacking them up in a pile in the middle of the cemetery. I know a lot of the stones are missing and broken, but if you're going to do a news article on it, you know, to give yourself some good attention, you should at least follow through with it, especially with that amount of time. If, I mean, like, he, was he sick or something? Maybe, but he, if he was able to get up on that lawnmower and drive all the way up this massive hill just to see what we were doing, he had enough time to where he could at least start planning out to fix up that place. I'm so angry, I'm sorry. Um, just because he wants to be in my business when he's not even going to take care of business that he said he was going to. <sighs> okay, now I don't even know where I was going with this. 
<laughs> but that's the cemetery and I'm so angry some of those stones are over a hundred years old they need to be preserved before they're gone because once they're gone God knows that there probably won't be any more to replace them so they need to be preserved while they are still there that's it's history it's somebody's life it's mark as I said in the I think it was the previous video sometimes that's all that's left of a person's life and I just feel like you know if it's there save it while you can like we spend so much time and energy saving all these other things that don't mean anything like this is probably a bad example but I'm still raging so like receipts we save receipts that we don't need old magazine subscriptions that we don't need and we treat these old pieces of history like they're garbage and once they're gone they're gone Okay, I think that's the end of that rant. So if he wants to come on here and fight me about it, go right ahead. I don't even care if I made anybody angry about that. If he needed help with it, you know, come find me. Hold on, I'm doing my video! Sorry. My brother was knocking on my door. Um, this cemetery, I cannot... I cannot think of the name of, but my aunt took this photo. There's like... It's either a planet or the moon, I can't remember. It was a weird time. <laughs> it's beautiful. It was on the way to the Tedro Cemetery, which is in um, a few of the books of like Iowa's top haunted places was Tedro Cemetery. The only thing I found creepy as hell in this cemetery was the amount of mosquitoes. We were running and getting bit. Like you couldn't open your mouth or you would breathe them in. It was just massive cloud that's where the picture tore a little bit pages got stuck together from the loop massive cloud of mosquitoes uh, but it's some place that you'd have to go during the fall oh, that's the last picture in there and I also would recommend that if you do visit it go in like a truck with four wheel drive because those roads if you you could fall off the side it, I it's you'd have to see it to believe me with how dangerous those roads are to get back there we almost got stuck but we found a back way out and then there was this huge block sign that says do not enter and we had to get out and move it so we could get out we're like we're not entering we're exiting and this little kid was in a yard yelling dad I'm like oh, oh no we're gonna get shot and, uh, we got out and it was it was an adventure one that I won't forget anytime soon Okay, oh, my notebook that I was going to use to ramble on about this. I was at the library the other day trying to research husband's grave, and I found a map of that cemetery. Look how full this used to be. And this is the only map I could find that was documented showing all the bodies that were buried there. Look at how full this used to be. And you saw that picture where there was only like five or six left standing. There's a pile of maybe five or six that are just stacked in the middle of the cemetery and look at how full this used to be okay if, and, and this is what they're going off of is a drawing like th there's no coordinates on this like I don't know if there's another one somewhere but this was all the library had of it and the, the description written in the book at the library was that it's been vandalized and rarely taken care of occasionally will be mowed can I adopt this cemetery? Because I would be more than happy to haul the push mower up that big ass hill and do it myself. I would personally volunteer to do that, but I feel that that man is possibly, maybe, again, this is my social anxiety speaking and first impression, too much of an asshole to let me do that. But there's a description of each person that was buried, like their initials, and then I think their name, I haven't really read through this whole list. Oh, yeah, there's like a name and then there says no data. This is just, oh, this gives me migraines. This, this is a photocopy of a book and this is a photocopy of the photocopy that I got at the library. And so far that's all I could find on that cemetery. And it just breaks my heart. Okay, moving along here. Tried to find um, husband's name and... I printed off a page that had some cemetery burial records and found one possible match. I believe his name might be William. 
and I had such bad social anxiety it took me forever to go to the library because I don't know them and I went up to the front desk and I whispered really quiet I'm like um um I'm, I'd like I'm, I what do I need for a library card like I'm all whispering and she's like what <laughs> and I'm like I need a library card <laughs> and I spent probably like four hours there just oh my god I get lost in books I guess you could say I'm a history buff. I just and then I was flipping through a book of miscellaneous obituaries. It just it hurts me with how many miscellaneous obituaries and people that Oh my god, I wish things were more documented, like more put together, labeled correctly. This really stood out to me and I have kind of made it my mission now to go track this man down. Nineteen ten is when this guy died. It says, takes own life by cutting his throat. Edward Pugh, long identified with horse inter... 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 inter I'm <clears throat> it's hard to read. It's a photocopy. Of Creston, found dead this morning. From England with horses. Murder, murder theory first advanced has been dismissed and it seems to be plain case of suicide. And as I was reading through this, it, the more I read through it, it just seemed strange and it didn't seem like it would be suicide. So I kind of, I kind of want to take my ghost box out there and see if anything comes through on that. You know, it wouldn't hurt to try. Oh, excuse me, the carbonation from my energy drink. Uh, it's 9.30 at night, and I'm about ready to go walk two miles. Edward Pugh, a horseman, and... That's... it. Okay. I think some of this is cut off. A horseman, and... Who for many years was employed with leading horse buyers of... My town. Was found dead this morning near the city tool near the city tool house, near the city tool, is there a city named tool? near the city tool house in the east part of Creston, his throat had been cut and from all appearances he had taken his own life. One peculiar circumstance led some to think at first that he had been murdered, but as there were no marks of violence on the body other than the gash on the throat, and as none of his valuables were missing, the murder theory had been dismissed. That's what they're basing this off of. This was 1910 though. I don't, I mean, it's possible it was a suicide, but as I, the more I thought about this, it just seemed like it could have been a murder. Um, the dead man was not found until about 7 o'clock when Robert Hanley, who is the employee of the city, employee of the city, went to the tool house to supply himself with tools for his day's work. The hands and face of the dead man were frozen stiff and it is thought that the deed was committed sometime after midnight so this man was out there after midnight and he slit his own throat outside the body was lying about ten feet south of the east and west fence that encloses the CB and Q yards on the north whichever that means a large pile of planks used by the city was between the dead man and the railroad fence and it was evident that when the knife was brought across his throat, he was between the fence and the lumber pile. A pool of blood and the knife covered with blood were between the fence and the lumber pile. And from all appearances, he had struggled either over the lumber pile or around it, and there dropped dead. It was expected that he had placed himself that distance from the place where the dead was com where the deed was committed that there would be a trail of blood but none was found either on the lumber pile or at either end of it and it was this that first puzzled the authorities however this was the only circumstance that would at all make it appear to be a case of murder coroner james mckee was called and after making an investigation the body was removed and moved to the undertaking rooms of mickle mcgregor oh that's a mouthful mickle mcgregor where it was prepared for burial okay and the rest just talks about like when his funeral takes place so they're saying it wasn't murder because the body wasn't dragged there were no defensive wounds and there was no blood at either end of the so okay what about if somebody walked up behind him and slit his throat he wouldn't have had time to react <clears throat> and he would have struggled like I don't know how somebody acts when they just cut their throat and that's probably something that I shouldn't know 
But why was this man outside past midnight between a lumber pile and a fence and slit his own throat? And just because his belongings weren't taken, that doesn't mean that somebody was going to try to rob him. There are many different motives for murder. And I just, that just stood out to me. I just was flipping through pages and I'm just like, I need to read this. And I read it and I printed it off. And I know where he's buried and I know the plot number and everything. So I'm going to go try to find him either tomorrow or sometime this week. <coughs> oh my god, I have a migraine now. I'm talking too much. I don't normally talk a lot like this. The more caffeine I put into my body, I think the worst is making it. But I feel like that was, that's kind of how another way I stumble upon these graves is I find things like that and I make it a mission to go find them. <coughs> and there's a picture that I haven't uploaded yet. I could find it, but this video is going on for God forever. <laughs> um, of a grave of this infant girl, and it was weird how I found this one. I was driving with my aunt, we were looking at tornado damage, and Zach Bagans has said that he feels that, in one of his books I was reading, he said that he feels that spirits are more active after like a storm or something like massive like that, and there was a tornado that just went through that area and destroyed a property like really bad and we stumbled upon this cemetery we didn't even know it was there I've lived here for in Iowa around this area for ever and I didn't even know that that was there and my aunt she she usually gets out of the car with me but she didn't get out this time oh, excuse me carbonation I should pick a different beverage when I do these videos and so it was weird because she always gets out of the car. I don't know why, but then I went up there and it was almost, it was very small cemetery. There's not a lot of people buried there. And I just kind of made my way to the back. I wasn't even really thinking like, ooh, let me see what's over here. I just kind of just, just beelined it clear to the back and there was this old, old grave. All the others looked fairly new, but this one was really old and it caught my eye. It was by a tree by itself. And there was, it said they died October 31st. And I could not make out the stone. It was very weathered and very hard to read. So I took some pictures at different angles so I could take it home later and add filters and maybe try to make out the words. But then when I went around the back, there was another stone there, just a stone sticking out. And then there was an out. I think it's called abalone shell, those shells with the shiny insides that you usually use them for like smudge bowls when you're burning sage. And I was like, oh. It stood out to me, I'm like, this is used in like smudge bowls, like oh, pagan item, like who, <laughs> which item here? And then like October 31st, I'm like, oh. So I was like, I need to come back and visit her again. And I assumed it was a her. I didn't, I don't know. It just, it felt like it was a her. And I left after I snapped some pictures. I can't remember if I left her anything. I ended up going back and leaving her another seashell and some other stuff. And I showed my aunt the pictures and then like as I was going through the pictures there was a glowing like light coming off of the gate. It was so weird and it was so pretty. And <coughs> I have dry throat. And so I went back there again and I've researched her for, I spent days researching her. And then what I found out was it was an infant daughter. She didn't even have a name that was recorded in any of the documents I found. And I think I found where her mom is buried and it's a two hour drive from here. But one of these days I'm going to make that drive and I'm going to find her mom and take pictures and add them both in my book. I just need to print off the picture of her or I could request, I think I put in a request on find a grave for somebody to take a picture of it. That was a weird, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, um, and that's that story. I don't know where we going from there. Oh yeah, God, longest video and I'm not even done. Um, I have an interesting lifestyle. And I, picked up a map because I felt that it would be pretty cool if I could mark 
every town like and cemetery that I go to and just kind of see where I've been around Iowa. Oh, I've got a bad headache. I'm starting to... Oh, right, okay, back on track here. This is another book I made. Again, $10 sketchbook from Walmart, and I got this page, the cover, this is a piece of paper, I got from those $5 scrapbook paper books and some glittery stickers, and then I Mod Podged over it to kind of seal it, and as you can see, it's Mod Podge, it's, for me anyway, it stays kind of sticky, so it kind of tore there, and it just, I don't know, I don't like it. This is kind of a hobby that I just started. I've been wanting to do this, and I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this. I love it when I have filled pages and just build, like, stuff. Filled pages of items and pictures and, um, there was this link my friend sent me on Facebook of this scrapbook that somebody had made, and, I mean, this thing was, like, mildew damage, and even on the description the lady says, you might want to wear a mask when you read through this because the mildew will get to you. And, um, she wanted like a hundred and seventy some dollars for it, which if it did not have as bad mold damage, I'm, I'm allergic to mold, if it didn't have mold damage, I probably would have saved and bought this at that ridiculous price. It was an old scrapbook somebody made with obituaries and they obviously cared very much about it because they were alphabetized. And there were like funeral cards, there were obituaries, and like it was well put together, like trimmed perfectly and just glued in every page, and it was beautiful. If I can find the link, I'll post it, and just because I feel it's very interesting. If this shop owner wants me to take the link down, I will, but I'm not like dissing the shop owner or anything. I just, I think that item is very neat, and I wish it didn't have mold damage because I would have bought it. I would have saved and bought this item. My friend said the same thing. Um, but it kind of, it, it really also bothered me that it was so damaged. Like, I'm not saying the seller did it because she said she came across it and it was that way. But whoever was, like, storing it before this woman had got a hold of it, like, that was somebody's hard work they put into trying to remember these dead people. Like, that person obviously cared a whole lot and now all their hard work is damaged. And it, that's the kind of stuff that really bothers me. Because that woman, I'm assuming it was a woman that made that scrapbook. It could have been a man. I don't know. I just, I keep saying woman. It just seems like something a woman might do. I know there's male scrapbookers. You, so no offense is what I'm trying to say. But <clears throat> she, uh, she obviously, she, like, she gets it, like, to remember these people. Like, I guess she, I could say she kind of feels about it how I feel about it. And maybe that's why it bothered me so much that the scrapbook ended up in that kind of shape. The seller said that there's probably others because they were alphabetized. And if I could ever, like, track down any of those, I would buy them, like, just to keep them, like, hey, here's your work, I'll keep it good for you. <laughs> uh, anyways, moving along. So that kind of inspired this idea for me. I'm not as organized as that person was. What they did was beautiful, and I hope there are more people like that out there that do that kind of thing. Because <laughs> God knows she's more he or she is more organized than I am. But I started this scrapbook of obituaries. Just I don't know these people. I've never met these people. I don't know who they are. I'll just occasionally <clears throat> I say occasionally, but like just about every day or every other day, I'll go pick up a newspaper. And there's two different newspapers that we get here from major cities, and that they have obituaries in them. I'm trying to hold it up so you guys can see. I'm not gonna like do a close up because these people are recently deceased, and I imagine that some of their families don't want them plastered on the internet. But recently deceased, and I'll get the obituaries out of the newspapers, and I'll cut them out, and I'll glue them into my book, and they'll at least be in a book where somebody can remember them. Or they'll be there, they'll be in a scrapbook. I can sit here and look through and read them and be like, oh, I bet, um, bet this was a very nice person, or oh, I, that person was interesting, you know, just something. It, it's a hobby. It keeps me busy. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> I feel that it's kind of harmless and it's 
kind of morbid, I guess, to some people. It's what I enjoy doing, and it's also a very cheap hobby because the newspapers are like a dollar a piece, and you get something to do, and you can remember all these people. And my mom's like, do you even know any of these people? And I said, no. <laughs> uh, I've actually got a couple of famous ones in here. And I've got, oh god, two, like four or six, I, I buy two at a time newspapers that I need to cut out and glue. I'll probably do that tonight when I'm done with my workout, if I ever get to it, because it's 9.30 now. No, 9.40. One of these clocks is off. Maybe both of them. It's probably actually like... Okay, it's 9.36. So this clock is off. Not that you guys care. And then I found some little quotes in he that I wrote down in here with my uh, Dove's Blood ink, which is not real blood, and my Porcupine Quill. I just, I like using it, and I want an excuse to use it, and it's mine, you can't tell me not to. <laughs> uh, this one says, Death leaves a heartache, no one can heal. Love leaves a memory, no one can steal. And I felt it appropriate for this book. It's like, so yes, it's sad that somebody passed on, but, you know, if you love them and remember them, nobody can take that from you. And since this is a book I, I call Gone But Not Forgotten, I felt it appropriate to put in here. Um, to live in the hearts of others is to live forever. So as long as you love somebody and you don't forget them, they're going to live on. So again, I felt it appropriate for this book because everybody in this book is not going to be forgotten. Like I might not be able to remember every name of the person that's in here, but I can sit here and go through this book and read about each one of these people that I've saved in here. And if anybody's like looking for an obituary that maybe they missed or I'm gonna like date it by year as I go because I'm sure I'm gonna have more than one book at the rate that I'm filling this book. Um, maybe they can, you know, if I've saved one obituary that somebody might be looking for later on, then to me that's a good thing. Like, none of these people are going to be forgotten as long as they're in this book. They'll always be in here. And this last quote, um, it, it's kind of, I, I wrote it down a little different. It's from a song by Steam Powered Giraffe. I, bl oh, was, I think this song was Starlight Starshine. <laughs> Sounds like a My Little Pony. Um, but I, I I recommend you guys looking them up. If they're a little different. They're like, ro they dress up like robots with the face paint and they're really, really good performers. And so this quote came from one of their songs. Was it from Starlight Starshine or was it from Hold Me? Well, it's from one of their songs and I wrote it a little different than as, as they sing it, but it said, can't you see my heart's your home? And it just kind of felt like it fit because, you know, they live in your heart. They're not, you know, as long as you remember them and they're there, they're not going to be forgotten. They're going to, they're going to always be there. So that's my scrapbooks. I'm, I've got more to add to them. I'm sure I had more to tell you guys, but Oh god, I've been rambling for over an hour because that last video was like over a half an hour. I'm s ooh, I'm talkative tonight. <laughs> um, so, you know, if any of you want to leave a comment, if any of you do scrapbooks like this or anything, you know, I'd, I'd love to see pictures or hear your stories. Have any cemetery stories? I'm, I never get tired of cemetery stories or anything like along these lines. I'd be interested if you guys would want to share any of that. I'll try to find the link for that. It, it was uh, in a shop on Etsy. I'll ask my friend to send me the link again to that one scrapbook. And you guys can see how neat and interesting that was. So, yeah, I guess if you want to just leave me a comment below, whatever. Thank you guys for bearing with me through my long-ass vlog and my rant. Um... I guess I will talk to you all next time.